Hey, today we are going to use the Sim Hub Control Mapper to map buttons to my new button box from PXN. And in order to set this up, I would first recommend you go back and watch my video on how to simply use Control Mapper in Sim Hub to set up your buttons on multiple wheels. Well, we're going to be using a button box today, but the idea is in principle the same. The first thing we're going to do though is we're going to go into Sim Hub and you go down to add remove features and you look for control mapper. Here it is and you activate it. So mine's already activated and it's going to show in the left hand side menu. Perfect. So if I look in the left hand side menu, there's control mapper. I can click it on and you'll notice that I have something called VJoy active. Again, go back and look at my simplified control mapper video for instructions on how to set up the VJoy. And also down here, you can see we have all of our output mapping done. Again, you can use the defaults that come with SimHub, or you can delete them all and put in your own. And that's what I've done. And again, refer to my earlier video for how to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of these functions and we're going to map them onto our PXN button box. And our PSN button box, we have, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 different buttons and switches, as well as a joystick that we can program. We also have an enter and an escape that are pre-programmed on the button box. So we can leave those alone. If you want to change those, you can do so. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, add a new source controller. And you can see I already have a bunch of source controllers mapped. But we're going to go down here to add a new source controller. So I'm going to click that. And we're going to look for that. And we're going to pick our PXN button box right here. Click OK, and here it is, and it says it's connected, perfect. And we have a little drop down uh, arrow that we can click beside it to see what we got here. And uh, so far, there is nothing on here. Now, what we can do is we can add uh, map controller functions. So I have to decide what I want to add. So I have picked some functions to add. And let's see, I'll go through here and I'll show you which ones I want. I'm going to do a, a black box up, a black box down. We're going to do the increments for black box and the menu for black box. We're going to do the wipers and the auto fuel toggle. The headlight, the headlight flash toggle. We're going to put all of these various functions onto the PXN button box. So it's pretty easy to do. Let's do an example with, um, let's pick the, the wipers toggle. Okay, so it says over here, click to assign. So I have to decide which button I'm going to use. And I have done that. And I'm going to click this and it says here, select input for wipers toggle, press a button or move something on the controller to assign it. So I'm going to press the button that I want. There it is. And it is button five apparently on my PXN button box. If I'm going to do headlights, again, I'm going to click to assign. And I am going to map that to a different switch. So here we go. There we go. I have mapped it to button 19. So there we go. 
So I'm going to go through and do all the different buttons I want. And then when I'm finished that, I'll come back and show you what I have. Looking ahead in time, we have now mapped our buttons on our PXN button box. And this is what we've got. You can see we have uh, moving the black box forward and um, down in terms of what we want to look at. Then we've got our black box menu going up and down, as well as black box increment and decrement. Those are all mapped to the joystick functions. And then we can go and we see we have an auto fuel toggle, a wipers toggle, headlights, headlight flash, a tires only during our pit stop, right tires only, tires and low fuel, and no tires and low fuel. So those are handy buttons to be able to press just during pit stops for what you want. And then we have uh, ABS front and back, forward and rear. We have traction control, ignition and starter because we have a cool ignition switch and starter button on this button box. And I think, oh, and then we did an engine map and we also did the uh, training paints reset for iRacing because sometimes you like to be able to, instead of reaching over and protect, uh, pressing on your keyboard, you can just press a button on the button box. So there we go. We've mapped our button box. So I'm going to click OK. And that's all done in here. And if I wish to check if these functions are working, I can check in here. So if auto fuel toggle is on and it's on here, that means there's been it's been mated. It's been matched. So that's good. So my auto fuel is over here. If I turn it off, it goes off. I've pressed the button box. Again, the same thing with my, my tires. I have right tires here activated on the button box. Right tires are activated in my list of output mappings in SimHub. Right now it's on. I can click it off. So there you go. I can check all the various things I just did. So I have my, uh, let's do the headlight flash. So I can do that. I click it and here it came on and off and over here on and off. So all of these things have been mapped and you can check them all just by pressing these buttons on your button box. Let me just try the engine start button. See what that does. Engine starter and it should be lit up. Yeah, there it is. Engine starter in the sim hub control mapping. So that's pretty cool. All of those functions have that I've chosen that I've decided to use from iRacing have been mapped onto my PXN button box. But now, how do we get them to actually work in iRacing? Well, that, I guess, is part two of the story. To have iRacing recognize what we just mapped on our button box, we're going to open up our options menu and we're going to go down here and click controls. And here we can find things like the headlight flash and the auto fuel toggle, the windshield wipers. We also have the ignition and starter and the various black box functions, the ABS, the traction control. These are all things that we wanted to map to the button box. So how do we get them to work in iRacing? Well, it's very simple. The first thing we do after opening up our control options menu here in iRacing, if we go back into SimHub, and we have to open the Mapping Assistant. And we've got two blue boxes for that. We can open it on a phone. They'll give you a QR code to scan. And again, to see that method in action, just watch my video on control mapping in SimHub. But they've also added a new option now because SimHub has been updated since I did that video. That was a video from a year or two ago. You can now open the mapping assistant as an overlay 
So I'm going to do it that way this time. So I, I'm going to click on that. And when I click on that, boom, I get this lovely overlay. And you can see it's got all the various functions that are available to us. Now, we didn't program all of those. We only picked about 16 or so. But what we do to map is very easy. So, for example, when we want to map the ignition button, we're going to look for the ignition button in our list here. And let's see, we have to just kind of scroll around to find it. Okay, there is the ignition button right here. It's button 49 in SimHub. So we go back to our ignition where we want to map in iRacing. Normally what we would do is we would click this and iRacing is waiting for us to press a button on our steering wheel or on our button box. But we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to go over to our Sim Hub Mapping Assistant and we're going to hold down this. And you can see it's now been mapped to our button box. So I'll do that for the starter. Okay, iRacing is waiting for us to choose a button. But again, we're not going to choose a button on our steering wheel or our button box. We're going to choose the one we mapped on SimHub, which is the starter button right here on SimHub. Hold that down. And there we go. It's done. If we go to Headlight Flash, again, I have to find it. Let's see, where is Headlight Flash? Headlight Flash, here it is here. So I click on it here in iRacing. It's ready to assign. So I'm not assigning it to my steering wheel. I'm not assigning it to my button box. I'm assigning it to my Sim Hub control mapper. So I just click that down and it's done. I can now do my auto fuel toggle. And again, I look forward over here. There it is right beside the black box toggle. And I click that and it's now mapped. So I'm slowly mapping the 16 different things that I chose for my button box. I'm mapping them to be used in iRacing by using my button box by clicking on the corresponding function in the control mapper assistant. So I'm just going to go through and finish mapping all those things that I've got in my button box. And I'll come back to you when I'm finished doing that. Ready to test our button box in iRacing. We've jumped into a session in the uh, Porsche 911. And let's first uh, start the car. So we're going to first click the ignition. We click the ignition button and the start stop. Perfect. Let's say we want to do uh, the wipers. There we go. That's pretty good. Toggling the wipers off and on. What else can we show you that will work? Um, let's try uh, just like if we want to change right tires only. Let's move to the tires box and we'll Click right tires only. And kind of hard to tell what's going on there with the jack man, but hopefully we're just doing right side tires. Yeah, it went up on the right and down on the right. Okay. If we are going to do, say, um, uh, what else can we check? Well, there's not much we can check while sitting in the pits, but we can show you that the black box. Uh, up and down through the black box toggle works. I can go back and forth. If I'm in a black box, I can use the joystick to go through the different menus. If I'm in fuel, I can increase the amount going up on the joystick, decrease going down on the joystick. 
So all those functions seem to be mapped quite nicely. And I'll just turn off the engine. There we go. So it looks like our new PXN button box is working just fine. Also on the button box, I'll just put a quick little uh, insert in in a second. I'll record it on my iPhone and just edit it into the video. We can also go through and we can change the RGB colors of the button box, which is a nice touch. Um, so overall, I'm very happy with the button box and using control mapper to map buttons to it using the SimHub control mapper. So uh, give control mapper a try. It's great if you have uh, lots of peripherals, button boxes, and different steering wheels. It means that each time you go into iRacing with a different steering wheel, you don't have to go and uh, go through all that configuration stuff that it asks you to do. The control mapper knows which steering wheel or which button box or whatever the peripheral is, and it automatically loads in the way you have assigned those buttons. So no more hassle when you're changing wheels and changing other devices connected to your SIM rig. Okay, well, that's it. Thanks for watching. And again, I know I've said it several times, but don't forget to check out my original video on the SimHub Control Mapper. There are a few things that have changed in the SimHub software but essentially you will find all the things that I'm describing in the different sections. So you should be all right. All right, thumbs up, see you on track.